obviously we had the uh, outing, right, at y'all church. We, we street evangelize all the time, right? Uh, that was just one of many, you know, I'm not sure you've been seeing us lately, not us in particular, but just our organization. Um, our mission is to come out and teach our brothers who we are according to the Bible. It's not, it's not being taught in the churches, right? We, we look in the Bible and we don't see ourselves. That's the problem. We don't see ourselves. So um, one of the things we want to start with is identifying ourselves in the Bible. And then, you know, we can go over some. I, it's not no plan debate or nothing like that. So it's like, yeah. We're not saying we can go 10 minutes, y'all can go 10 minutes, or we can do it like that. I don't know how yeah. we want to do it, but um, we, we definitely want to touch on Deuteronomy 28 um, because that's one of the primary chapters that identifies who we are in the Bible. So let's just start. Um, let's just start the Deuteronomy. Uh, give me one and one first. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Oh, by, by the way, just, just so y'all know, I'm, I'm Captain Josiah. This is Officer Ray Will, Officer Mishael. You may know him something else, but Mishael and Officer Scott. Officer, 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 Officer. You are doing your favor. Yeah. Translating, obviously, Captain, you're over the this particular correct, correct. Yeah. organization. And Officer is Locally. Locally, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. And Officer is... Yeah, so, he, so he's he's my second. He's an officer of eighty. Okay. He's an officer of fifty. They're both officers of fifty. But we, we do. Matter of fact, get that real quick and do run. Show me. I got you. You want verse sixteen? Uh, fifteen. Chapter one, verse fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse fifteen. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, mm -hmm. and made them heads over you, mm -hmm. captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, so and officers. different structure. Hundreds, tens, thousands, whatever the case, go ahead. Okay. And officers. And officers, go ahead. Among your tribes. Mm -hmm. And I charge your judges at that time. Notice it says, I charge your judges. Because mm -hmm. that's what we are. We're all set up to be judges, right? Go ahead. At that time, saying, hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother. Right, so that's the point. So that's what we okay. get it from. It's rooted in that, but it's no different than the New Testament. We have bishops, deacons, and so forth. So we do have bishops. We have deacons. Captains is the next structure, and then it goes down. From, from Perfect. Right. Okay. So yeah, um, Deuteronomy one and one. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter one and verse one. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. Right. So the point we want is, these are the words that he spake to all of Israel. Right. When they came out of Egypt. This is what he spoke to them. So uh, let's jump to chapter 28, same book. And um, let's just start at verse 15. We'll start at 1, 28 and 1 first. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Notice what it says there. It says, if the Israelites hearken to do all the commandments, the Most High God will set them on high. It says what again? The last part. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth. God never created us to be equal to everybody. He never created all nations to be equal. His, his plan was for Israel to rule the earth and the other nations would be under them as servants. Right? Read it again. Verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Right, that's the point. Israel will be above all nations. Now, verse 15. Verse 15. So we, we know historically Israel as a whole did not keep God's commandments. Of course, you had pockets and you had righteous brothers, the prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, countless others that did keep the commandments, but as a whole, they did not. Okay, so after Egypt, when you read through the Bible, you read about the uh, Assyrian captivity, you read about the Babylonian captivity, which that's where Daniel was. 
Um, then after that, you have the Persian Mede captivity. Then Greece, then Rome, which is during the time of Christ. So all these, throughout all the, all the history, after King Solomon, Israel is in captivity after that period. Okay, why? Verse 15, this is why. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right. Curse. That's an evil thing, right? Everybody agree? Absolutely. Evil things will happen to the Israelites. So just give me a couple of them real quick. Just give me a few, a few curses. All right, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. Right, it says, the Israelites' sons and daughters, excuse me, will be given unto another people. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. What is that talking about? Slavery. The Israelites' sons and daughters will be given to another people. He already told them earlier, if you do the commandments, I'm going to set you on high above all nations. This is going into curses, which are evil things, and one of them is that sons and daughters will be given to another people. When did that happen to us? Throughout the entire history of the Bible, like I mentioned earlier, from the Assyrian captivity, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, even to today in America. Right? Who are our sons and daughters given to during this time period? Here we are, see. Us, as a, as a people, right? Mm -hmm. So-called black people, who are our sons and daughters given to? What do, you, what do you mean? Who are we? In slavery. Who are, we, who are our sons and daughters given to? In this day and time? Correct. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when you when you say slavery, I mean, what are, you, what are you referring to? Yeah, that's what this is talking about. Read it again. Thy sons and thy that's daughters. The that's exactly what this is talking about. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. Meaning there will be no might to get them back, right? When you look at the, the different slave movies, 12 Years a Slave or Roots and these different movies, that's our history. That's what this is talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody else can attach to this history. The, the Jewish man in Israel cannot say this happened to him. You know, not another people. You understand what I'm saying? Give me another one. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. It says, you shall betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Now, again, we're going back to, you know, if you guys have seen any of these slave movies, you'll see the slave master come off the plantation, and just go grab any woman he want, and just, he have his way with it. That's what this is talking about. Okay? Oftentimes, those women were married. Okay? Or promised to be to, to a brother. He just came and took the one, raped her. Read it again. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Yep. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Yep. Thou shalt plant a vineyard. So, guess what? Even the White House, you know that was built by us? We put our hands on the White House. Did we live there? No. Yeah, you have people that work there, but you understand? We didn't dwell in those houses. The big house that we built for Master, we didn't dwell in that house. Okay? That's what this is talking about. Read it again. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. All the, the crops that we planted throughout slavery was not for our benefit. That's what this is talking about. Give me another one. Verse 48. Therefore shall thy read, serve... Read, read 47 with it. Verse 47. Where, 46. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. You know and, what? i got to get 45. Sorry. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because you know, thou... It's, it's, it's still talking about those same curses from verse 15, but he's reiterating the point. All these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee. So, same thing I mentioned earlier. They pursued us in Assyria. They pursued us in Babylon. They pursued us, pursued us in Persian and Mede, Greece, Rome, even to, to this very day. Go ahead. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Yep. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. He's talking about the curses. The curses will be upon the children of Israel for a sign. Mm -hmm. 
and for a wonder. But the point I want the sign first. You guys pulled up outside of this this uh, building here. You saw the sign. You knew what this building was based on the sign. Okay, Mount Moriah, we know what that is based on what? The sign is outside. These curses are signs to do what? And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Notice it says seed forever, meaning your children. These will be signs upon the children of Israel forever. Okay, you know? Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shall thy serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. So notice it says that it says the Israelites would have to serve their enemies. It says for hunger, thirst, and nakedness. For food, water, and clothing, Israel would have to serve their enemies. Again, going back to slavery. Who do we have to serve for food, water, and clothing? Right? We had to serve the so-called white man. Okay, today, who do we have to serve for food, water, and clothing? It's the same people. The only difference is you can go buy it yourself. But guess what? The money still got their face on it. Okay? For food, water, and clothing, it says we will serve who? Read again. It says, therefore shall thy serve thy enemies, yep. which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness. Food, water, and clothing, we have to serve our enemies. Read. And in want of all things. And in want of anything you want. Okay, go ahead, watch this. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So now that's a very specific curse. It says that enemy will put yokes of iron on your necks until he have destroyed thee. So now, when you examine world history, what nation of people had yokes of iron on their necks? Okay, that was only our people. That did not happen to the Caucasian that calls himself Jewish. It didn't happen to the Chinese man, the Arabic man, the East India man. It didn't happen to them. It happened to us. The Bible is talking to the Israelites. Okay, reading it, that part. And he, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Notice it says until. I'm looking at everybody today. We don't have the yokes on now. But we did as a, as a nation. It says until he have destroyed thee. So now we don't call ourselves Israel no more. We're African American, we're black, we're colored, Afro American, niggas. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're destroyed. Mexicans. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. All these different proverbs and bywords, okay? Give me, give me the uh, point in 68. Verse 68. Matter of fact, read, read on. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from now, far. Still talking about the same nation. It says, He shall bring a nation against thee from what? From far. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. Now, that particular verbiage there is, is very key. It says, the nation will be as swift as the eagle flieth. So now, does any, we have the image here? We don't have the uh, image with it, right? Uh, okay, right. right. So, right. So, look at this right here, right? On the American dollar bill, what, what animal is that? That's the eagle. Okay? Remember, it says... That enemy will put yokes of iron on our necks until he have destroyed us. And he identifies himself as the eagle. Okay. Greece was an eagle. Rome had the eagle. Spain had the eagle. France, Germany, Russia, they all had the eagle. Okay, as their emblem. Remember, when they when they landed, um, we got more images right here, but you know, this is one of the flies we hand out. Okay, Greece, Rome, USA. But Remember, when they landed on the moon, what did they say? They said, what is landing? When, Thank God. No? He said, the eagle has landed. Oh, yeah. he said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read that part again? Verse, verse 49. I know you didn't know I was going yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. Remember, it's the same nation that put yokes of iron next. You're talking about the same nation here. So again, when they landed on the moon, they said, the eagle has landed. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's their emblem. That's mm -hmm. who they are. But God tell them, who, what did he tell us about 48, read 48 again? Who Therefore did? shall thy serve thy enemies. Thine enemies, thine enemies. Okay, the Bible is very specific, okay, on who he's talking about. Not your friends. Of course, we, we're supposed to live peaceably with all men, but we gotta identify who's who in the Bible. Okay, verse 50. 
I'm almost done with 48. Well, well, that's give me give me 68 and then 68. You know, I'll, I'll open the floor because they want to say something real quick. Uh, yeah. Verse 68. Yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Remember, he's talking to the Israelites. They just came out of Egypt. And he said, if you obey God, I'm going to set you on high above all nations. But if you don't, all these curses are going to come upon you. This is one of them. He said, what again? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He shall, he shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. Give me the uh, definition of Egypt real quick. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All right, so God is calling Egypt the house of bondage. Okay, the house of bondage or slavery. Remember, the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt. That's what they were doing. Okay, read 68 again. Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Right, so again, what people historically went into bondage via ships? That only happened to us, okay? The Bible is talking about the Israelites. Read it in. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. The same enemy that put yokes of iron next. It says there, when you get off those ships, you should be what? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies yep. for bondmen and bondwomen. Slave men and slave women when you get off those ships. Right? And no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem you out of those conditions. Prove that in verse 29 real quick. Verse 29. When it says no man shall buy you. Show, show and, me what that means. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not put a prosper in thy ways. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt only be oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. Right, that point. No man shall save thee is the same thing this was saying here. No man shall buy thee. That means save or redeem. Okay, because we're still in the same place that our forefathers and foremothers were sold on ships. We're still in the same exact place. Okay. And when you look at this history right here with Israel, when they got delivered from Egypt, Moses took them out of the land. Right, so we're still in the land of our captivity to this very day. We haven't been taken out of this land back to our own land, which is Jerusalem. Can I get that real quick, Kevin? Wait, who? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And this is uh, and that, and that, his point is that's what the purpose of Christ's second return is. Right. He's the redeemer this time. Okay. Galatians chapter four verse twenty six. Mm -hmm. But Jerusalem. Which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. Because a lot of black people, we don't know where we come from. We say Africa, but we don't know the exact location where we come from. Jerusalem is actually in northeast Africa. It is a part of Africa. But so-called white men built the Suez Canal and divided the land and called it the Middle East. Right. And that's a lot. We come from Jerusalem, which is, which is in northeast Africa. So that's our land that we're looking to be taken back to. Right. Read that. Read it again. Galatians chapter 4 verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. That's the point. Which is the mother of us all. That's our motherland. Okay. Jerusalem. Which means the, the city of peace. That's what it means. Right? The land of peace. Jerusalem. All right. Y'all want to y'all wanna say something real quick? Or we're going we gonna to go more into, um, you know, Identifying. Um, let's go more. Okay, let's go more. I'm, I'm a uh, type of person I am. I actively listen. So please don't take my lack of response as no, no, I'm fine. actively taking notes and definitely taking notes. Okay. Go ahead. Go, go Back to Deuteronomy 28. You know what I mean? Yeah. Any questions, real quick, on what we touched on? No? All right. So, the one thing, you are equating. Deuteronomy 28 as a prophecy to slavery? 100%. That's what Moses was telling the Israelites. Okay. Okay, now let's let's back that up um, with Luke, with Christ. Let's see what Christ said. Yes, sir. This is a Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. And, and the reason why I'm going here is because, um, give, me, give me the scripture real quick in Galatians. Uh, Galatians 3 and 13. I want to show you this. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. I got to think of it. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone that hangeth on a tree. Right. So there it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So when we read in Deuteronomy 28 and we teach that to our people, they, they, they have that precept in their mind. They say, no, 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 Christ did away with all that. They don't apply to us. You know what I mean? Those things are done away with. But watch what Christ said in Luke chapter, uh, was it 20 or 21? 21. 21. Watch this. Chap uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. He said, when you see Jerusalem, the homeland, surrounded by armies, know your destruction is near. Read. So, then, so notice he's speaking in future tense. He's talking about a future event that's going to happen. Read again. Verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Your destruction is near. Read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Then let them which are in Jerusalem flee further into Africa. Flee into Egypt. Okay, go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Yep. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Right, so if you're not in Jerusalem, don't come back. That's what he's saying. Read on. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Notice what he's talking about. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Christ is talking about things that are written aforetime, they're going to be fulfilled in the future. Okay? So those curses in Deuteronomy 28, Christ did not take those completely out of the way when he came on the scene the first time. What Christ came and died to take out of the way was sacrificial law, to give Israel a chance to repent and redeem themselves back to the Father. But he's telling us right here, all things that are written may be fulfilled. He's telling us that. Read it. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Yep. For there shall be a great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Upon this people, the Israelites only. You know? And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. This is Christ talking. He's still talking about his people. He says, the Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword. Read on. And shall be led away captive. Shall be what? Shall be led away captive. Christ is prophesying the same thing Moses said. He says, they shall be led away captive. Into all nations. Into what? Into all nations. How do we think that happened? How, how, think about this. How could the Israelites be led away captive into all nations from Jerusalem to America? He said all nations. So how did that happen? Or Africa to America. The only transportation is ships. They didn't have planes until the last what? Century. Right. 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 So that's several hundred, hundred years or so, right? Ships, the same thing Moses prophesied. They should be led away captive into all nations on ships. Christ was saying the same thing here. Read it again. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And watch this. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. Jerusalem, when the Israelites would be led captive into all nations, the Gentiles would be walking in Jerusalem. So he's telling us right now, the Gentiles are over there, not the true Israelites. Read again, that part, the last part. Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles yeah. until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. You want to touch something? Yeah, if I can go back to Deuteronomy 2864. Yes, sir. Yeah. Gentiles, when that is spoken of for you, well, Christ, he specific, notice he specifically said Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So now we got to look at who's in Jerusalem now. Mm -hmm. Who's been there? Okay, it's always been over the last several hundred years, it's been the, the white man that calls himself Jewish and the, the Palestinians. Okay, they've been there. Matter of fact, we can prove that. Um, give me that prophecy real quick. Joel. Yeah, Joel. Joel. Show him that. Joel. I got three, two. I got you. Joel chapter three, verse two. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Look, watch this. Wait, 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 wait. Read that again. I will also gather all nations mm -hmm. and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's the valley of decision. Jehoshaphat, that's what that means, but. And will plead with them there for my people. Notice it says he will plead with them there for his people. Not 
All the other people have the Israelites amongst them. That's why he's saying that. Remember, he said it would be scattered into all nations. He's saying the same thing here, prophetically. Read again. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations Watch this. and parted my land. You see that? Once Israel was scattered, the land was parted. You have the Jewish man and the Palestinians, okay? Both fighting over the land is not theirs because the true Israelites were scattered everywhere else. Okay, now are we there in pockets? Yeah, there's a couple of us there. We everywhere still. But as a nation, we're not there. That's the point. They parted our land. So touch on your point. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Deuteronomy 28, 64. As Captain, he was making the link between Deuteronomy 28, the curse of the law on, on Christ, but it's not done, it's not fulfilled with Christ dying. We're still under that. We don't. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. That's what we read twice now in Joel and in Luke 21. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Confirming again, ships. That's how we get there. We get to the Americas, which wasn't called that. We'll get to that later. It's yeah. called something different. Read on. And there thou shalt serve other gods. So not only would be scattered, you'd be in idolatry. Read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And that's representative of the two major religions on earth. Christianity is the wood. Islam is the stone. Those are the two, uh, I, would, I, don't, I don't want to say greatest, but most populated uh, Pop populous? Yeah, pop, yeah, popular. Popular, yeah, popular, I'll say that. Most popular religion on earth. And just so happens they represent by the cross. That's the wood, the cross. Yeah. And then the so-called Kaaba stone over there in Mecca. That's representative of Islam. And that's where you find our people, majority, we're in those religions, scattered all over the world. That's part of that curse. And, and notice, notice one thing that comes with that. Notice it says, you shall serve other gods Okay, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Even means indeed, wood and stone. So what comes with that wooden cross in the churches? You get a Caucasian image of Jesus. Meanwhile, the Bible tells us he looks like you with woolly hair. Okay, like all of y'all. Christ looked like y'all. Meanwhile, they give us a false image. That's what this is saying. We serve other gods. So Christianity is not in the Bible. All right? Christianity is not in the Bible. All right? That's what this is saying. We serve other gods. So that, you know, we idolize the cross. People put on their arms tattoos. We get the, the, the uh, emblems on our chains. Yeah. All these different things. They the steeples of the churches. Right, yeah. right. Right on the church, the steeples. That was that was the image that crucified the Messiah. Okay? Christ never said, that's that's another thing. Like, Christ never said um, to, to show love to him in that way, by right? A graven and, image. Yeah, a graven image. That's, that was a form of capital punishment. So I guarantee you, George, George Floyd's, uh, his mother and his family ain't going to have a, an image of a police officer on him or Tamir Rice. They're not going to have a gun on them. You understand what I'm saying? The yeah, images yeah. That, that kill their, their family members. Now we idolize that thing. Christ never said do that. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Isaiah 42 and 8. I know the, the cross is closely associated with Christianity. But well, watch this right here. You've seen in Roman Catholic Church or wherever they do the sign of the cross. They put a lot of power into that graven image. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord. That is my name. Mm -hmm. And my glory will I not give to another. Mm -hmm. Neither my praise to graven images. So you can't praise God with any image. Now you can have a chain or whatever around your neck. But that cross. Remember that same cross they held to the face of the Native Americans. And the so called Hispanic Americans. When they were saying, oh, worship white Jesus to die. That's that same cross. Same cross the Ku Klux Klan to this day. We'll put on your lawn and light on fire. Closely associated with white supremacy. Okay. Now let, let's deal with some color. So any questions about the, the curses that befell the Israelites? Because again, you examine all history. Matter of fact, let me get this point real quick. I want to show you something out of this book. Read this point for me, Mr. Carl, on uh, page 36. And while he's getting there, um, we as a people, when it comes to the Bible, uh, we, when, you, when you read the Bible, right, you got to read it from a historical context. If you're just reading it just to, uh, you know, 
memorize scriptures to quote and everything like that, you're not going to get the understanding. You have to read the Bible precept upon precept, and you have to know the history that goes with the Bible. The Bible is a historical book. Right. You're reading it through closed eyes, and you're thinking about Baptists when you're opening the Bible, or you're thinking about uh, Pentecostal. Watch this. It's a history book. Watch this. This is uh, a short history of the Western civilization, volume one. All right, page 36. The most significant of the small nations for the history of Western civilization was that of the Hebrews. To do them justice in a brief account is... Now read it read it again and read it slow. Because I know they, they're not looking at it, so they got to be able to you know, absorb the words. The most significant of the small nations... The most significant of the small nations... For the history of Western civilization, meaning on this side of the planet, on, on the West, was that of the Hebrews. So it says the most significant of the small nations in the West is the Hebrews. I thought they were in Jerusalem. No, they know who's over here. Because we were brought here on ships, the Hebrews, you know. To do them justice in a brief account is virtually impossible. To do them justice in a brief account is impossible. Go ahead. For few people have evoked great interest or more intensive study. Mm -hmm. We are aided in telling their story. Watch this. We are aided, we are helped in telling the Hebrew story Go ahead. by a magnificent literature, literary, literary record yep. they created. They created a magnif magnificent literary work they created, right? Their Bible. Their Bible. This is a history book. Read that part again. We are aided. We are aided in telling their story by a magnificent, a magnificent literary record they created, mm -hmm. their Bible. Why does it say they created? Because Moses, the words he wrote in Deuteronomy, Moses wrote it down, he was an Israelite, okay? The prophecies, Isaiah, he was an Israelite. Jeremiah, he was an Israelite. Amos, they were Israelites, so forth and so on. That's why it says what they created. God gave the word, them the words, they wrote it down. We don't? Called the Old Testament in the Christian world. That's the point. Their record is called the Old Testament in the Christian world. I'm saying their. It's, it's y'all. That's who y'all are. That's who we are. We're the Hebrews. We're the Israelites. We Com composed over a long period of time yep. out of a mixture of historical traditions, mm -hmm. legal enactments, yep. moral the laws. exhortations, mm -hmm. and spectacular. Ooh, I can't see. It says speculation. Speculations. speculations. Yeah. yeah, that thing was broke. <laughs> and speculation. Speculation meaning like, like some things they didn't understand. Okay, so they would say, oh, it's speculative. Like, you know, what, what the hell are they talking about? But this book raises innumerable problems for the historian. See that? This what? This book raises innumerable problems. I'm talking about this book. I ain't talking about that book. This book raises what? Innumerable problems for the historian. Why? Because they teach you you're nigga, you're African American, you black, you colored. But it raises problems for the historian because when you go in it and you find out the prophecies, you're not reading from a, a biblical, like a, a Christ, Christianity perspective. It's like, dang, this is the history of the Hebrews. This is what happened, that happened. Go ahead. But it does provide a historical record far superior to that produced by any other ancient Near Eastern people. You see that? A far superior record of anything they can imagine. Okay, this right here. That's why it says a historical record. So yes, when we read Deuteronomy 28, that is prophetically talking about what would happen to us, and it did happen. You know? So yeah. You want to use your color? Yeah, the color. Part. Part. Yeah, color. Any questions on that? Nope, I'm with you. All right. I got Songs of Solomon. Yeah. You want that one? Yeah. All right. This is the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Read it again. This is Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Now, the point we want to show y'all in this, or to highlight, is it says the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. This is his song. He wrote it himself. Because when we read the next part, in Christianity, they'll say, oh, this is a black woman. She wrote it. You know, she's talking about herself. No. What did it say again? The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. What did Solomon say in verse 5? Verse 5. I am black, but comely. Yep. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Solomon said himself, he's black. He's describing himself. What Caucasian man would say, I am black? They would not say it. Okay? 
it has no relevance to them. Okay, read again. Verse 5, I am black but comely. Black and beautiful, black and handsome. Okay, go ahead. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Come on. Look not upon me, because I am black. Get another one real quick. Jeremiah. You got the 8 and 21? Yeah, let's get that all right, Jeremiah 8 and verse 21. For the hurt of the daughters of my people, I am hurt. I am black. Now, surely a white man wrote that. What did he say? I am black. I am black. Right? Astonishment had taken hold on me. Now, let's go to Lamentations. Because some people, hey, you know, he's talking about his mental condition. Let's go to Lamentations. Chapter 4 or chapter 5? Chapter 5. Chapter 5? Yeah. Lamentations, chapter 5 and verse 10. Now, watch this. Same, same time period. Good. Our skin was black like an oven. Now I got to stop you. He said our skin was black like an oven. Now I've seen the so-called white man that calls himself a Jew in, uh, what do you call it, Auschwitz uh, during the Holocaust. Starved. This is during the famine. Starved out, sick. They didn't turn black. This is black people. Black people, they get hungry. You've seen the African with the flies in the eyes. So we get darker. Read that again. Our skin was black like an oven. Because of the terrible famine. That's proof right there. When he's referring to blackness, he's talking about skin color. Now you can give me four names for Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Their right. visage. It's called Yeah. Okay. Lamentations chapter 4 and we verse. We started verse 7. Verse 7. Her Nazarites were purer than snow, mm -hmm. they were whiter than milk. Now that sounds like a contradiction. But it's not talking about skin color here. It's talking about purity. We'll prove it. Read down. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. It's not saying they were red. We're talking about their health. Read. Their polishing was a of sapphire. So they were pure and they were healthy at one time. Hey, real quick. Yes, sir. Um, this is Lamentations, right? Four and seven. Years. So Jeremiah wrote Lamentations. Yes. Now, can you get the Zonovan real quick? You got it? Yes. So yeah, he's right. Give me, give me um, ready. Um, because that said ruddy, right? Ruddy. Read it one more time. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Because that, the Caucasian man has tried to use that word and attach it to the Israelites as, as being red. Right. Or Adam, oh, he was red, he was ruddy, he was red. Watch what it says here. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Right? So it's just a dictionary of, of biblical words. Right? Page, page 510. Ruddy. A word used to to refer to a red or fair complexion. So it says, okay, it's used to refer to a red or fair complexion. Watch this. In contrast. In contrast, meaning in opposite. To the dark skin of the Hebrews. You see that? The dark skin of the Hebrews. So when it was saying ruddy here, I'm talking about red. Dark complexion. Y'all would be called ruddy in a biblical sense. Okay, read it again. In contrast. Read it from the top. Ruddy. A word used to refer to a red or fair complexion mm -hmm. in contrast to the, to the dark skin of the Hebrews. Right. The dark skin of the Hebrews. Going back into what Lamentations was referring to. Okay. Verse 8. Verse 8. You, you do 7 again. Okay. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Their Nazarites were purer than snow. Mm -hmm. They were whiter than milk. So that's the color white. Read. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. So we... You would think just reading it means red, but we just seen the definition. Talk about a healthy complexion, really. Come on. Their polishing was of sapphire. Now that's blue. Now we ain't white, red, and blue all over. There's no people like that. Those are more characteristics of like health, mm -hmm. healthiness, right. good complexion. Now watch verse eight. Verse eight. Their visage. Visage. It, my Bible says appearance. How they look. That's what visage means. Read. Their visage is blacker than a coal. So that's the color they are. That's what I said right. in, in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews in the definition. Go ahead. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Mm -hmm. Their skin their cleaveth. Skin, so that's what we're talking about in this verse. We're talking about their skin. Read. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. Mm -hmm. It is withered. It is become like a stick. So in context, you'll see it's saying the opposite of the previous verse. They went from being healthy, good complexion, all the way down. Now they, they, they're sick. But the skin, black. black. White people don't turn black when they get sick. Doesn't that? It's talking about the Jews being black. Um, yeah. No, get the one you had here. 
Uh, this is the book of Esther, the rest of Esther, chapter 15, verse 5. And she was ruddy through the perfection of her beauty. That goes with what Cap was saying earlier. Doesn't say that she was red. It's talking about the perfection of her beauty. David also was mentioned as ruddy. Not saying, oh, he's a red man or a, a Caucasian man, but that he had a beautiful complexion. It also made, you can read in Samuel, we won't go there, that it actually made Goliath angry. You said, this ruddy boy, this good looking guy to come fight me. You know what I'm saying? Like a little young kid. Mm -hmm. No no bruises or welts on his face. Don't like a warrior. And it made him mad. Hey, can you, can you read this real quick? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, um, this is another um, historical book here. Matter of fact, this book um, showed a publishing date on this. I mean, so I think it's 18. This is obviously a newer copy, but the original date, is it, is it tell us? Mm. It should be in there. Flip over one time. Should be right there on that page. Right. 1850. Right. 1850. That's when this book was originally published. Now, right. It's, it's a treatise on physical geography. That's the name of the book. So now, we're going to read on page 297. Um, yeah, just that. Show me. I'm going to read just this, this, that highlighted part. I highlighted it. All right, page 297. Thus, the Jews are people who have ever, according to the prophecy, dwelt alone, without intermixing with the nations to this day. That was during that time, 1850, right? Go ahead. Now, this separate race, all descended from brown ancestors. Now it says, now this what? Now this separate race, all descended from brown ancestors. Watch this. For Ab this is in uh, parentheses. For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yohanan. Mar Yohanan. So now it says... The Hebrews descended from brown ancestors. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yohanan. That's this Arabic guy. You can look him up. You can see him. You look at him. He's, he's, he's dark. Okay. Read on. If not darker. If not darker. It's talking about the Israelites descending from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Black men. Read on. In parentheses. Exhibit every shade of color from the black Jews of Malabar, mm -hmm. of whom we have such an interesting account by Dr. Claudius Buchanan. Notice it says the black, okay, black Jews. We don't. To the rose and lily complexion of the Jewess of the banks of Elbe. Now it says to the rose and lily complexion of the Jewish, that's talking about Amalek, the so-called Jewish man. So it says we got these dark Jews and then we got these white men that call themselves Jews as well. We got two different complexions. But it said earlier they descend from brown ancestors. So now why, why you got two different totally opposite complexions. We, don't. we need go no further than the Jews of southern Spain mm -hmm. and compare them with those of Holland and northern Germany. Right. Meaning Esau. Or, you don't know who Esau is or not yet, but that's the Caucasian man according to the Bible. He says uh, they're found in Germany, which is where they come from. We don't. We go no further than the Jews of southern Spain mm -hmm. and compare them with those of Holland and northern Germany. Mm -hmm. To perceive a very striking difference. Right. The Spanish Jew is this. always dark complexion. The Spanish Jew is always dark. Because what is this talking about? We ruled it. During the Dark Ages, we ruled Europe, Spain, Russia. That was us. The Dark Ages, we ruled. Okay. When you have the term called Renaissance, after the Dark Ages, they took back over. They came back into power. They took over. So we ruled Spain, Europe, Russia during, those, during the Dark Ages. That's why I said the Spanish Jew is dark. You know? And his hair is uniformly black, mm -hmm. while it's the German Jew. While the German Jew, good, is often as fair as any German, mm -hmm. and has light or red hair with blue eyes. Yep. The various shades of color observable among the Negro or African race mm -hmm. tends to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. Why? So now, why is it mentioned the Negro or the African race with the Jews? Because they're the same people. He's going to say that, you know. Along the coast of Guinea, which is low, marshy, and hot. We find jet black complexions, mm -hmm. and this is very country, this, from, from this very country, mm -hmm. from which American Negroes have been derived. You see that? Where we come from, we, we are the Jews. That's what it's saying. The American Negroes descend from those same people, the black Jews. Okay, that's what it's talking about. Read that last part again. It says, along the coast of Guinea, which is low, marshy, and hot, we find jet black complexions, and this is the very country from which American Negroes have been derived. 
Right. Many of us, okay, came from that area, but it's telling us the Israelites were black and we descend from those 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 people. Why does it associate American Negroes with, Negroes with them? Because that's who we are. Based on how do they know that? The Bible. Remember the other book said uh, we are aided in telling their story by a magnificent literary work they created. So that's our history. So they know that based on the prophecies. That's who we are. And it's, and it's important for her to bring out these color scriptures to show the true depiction of what the people in the Bible look like because we've been given movies like Ten Commandments. They show that every each film in Torah and Esther. Yep. And the Bible don't say Moses looked like that. You know what I mean? Um, they show the children of Israel as white. You see the passion of the Christ. They depict Christ as a white man. Right? So when us as black folks, when they show the, the biblical images to us, it's white people. But we clearly read in the Bible that the people of the book are black. Can you give me first Maccabees real quick? Let me show you what they did. So if the people that we're now learning uh, the Bible from change the images, don't you think they're going to change the doctrine? Yes. Once they show you that the people of the Bible are white, now they can teach you something different than what the Bible is actually saying. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48. Uh -huh. And laid open the book of the law. So, so this time period right here is during the time of the Greek captivity. This is the Apocrypha. Which, matter of fact, before you make your point, I, I, can we get uh, chapter 1 to just the yes. yes. Chapter 1 and verse 1. And it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian. Notice it says Alexander. There's a famous man in history to call him Alexander the Great. He was the first king over Greece. It's going to say that. This is the Bible. Read it again. It says, And it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes. Now, why is that key? Because remember I referenced it earlier. I said, from the Assyrian captivity, you had Babylon, the Persian and Medes, then Greece. That's what that's saying. He did what? He smitten who? He smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes. Because Greece took over the Persian and Medes empire. Once they came into power, they wiped them out. Okay, go ahead. That he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. Right. So this particular book we're reading about was going into Greek history. Alexander, when he began to reign, this is what happened. So, right. And so this is a Bible atlas, right? It tells you that time period is called the intertestamental history. That's the time period between the Old Testament and the New Testament, which a lot of churches don't teach this part of the Bible. Right. Look what it says there. The intertestamental history, mm -hmm. and then it's mentioning the Greek period there. Okay, who is that right there? Head of Alexander the Great. So, so that that book. Notice that book right there. It's it's a red book. Where's your Bible? Where's your Bible? Your Bible? Yeah, my Bible. So, so his his actual Bible doesn't have that book in there, but mine does. Mine mine does have it in there. Okay, you can get it. Right? I'm going to show you what it says. It says King James Version, the Holy Bible. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. Bear with me for a second. So oftentimes, right, last book in the Old Testament is Malachi. I hope y'all can see that. Mm -hmm. um, Malachi, when you flip over, boom, the Apocrypha. Okay? These books were always a part of the Bible. Um, all the way up until the, when the 1611 was translated, after that, they begin to take it out, okay? So this is the 1611 version. So he, he has it separately in that red book, but I have it here, okay? okay. Now, um, yeah. I was going to say, uh, if you buy this book at Walmart, it says, because that's where I buy mine, it says, this Bible contains the text of the authorized King James Version originally published in 1611. So all the old Bibles had the apocrypha. It was right. the Protestant Catholic, uh, Protestant church that took it out. Right, so that's this is what he's reading right here, okay? First Maccabees, that's what he's reading. Read, read a verse again. All right, First Maccabees chapter one and verse one. And it happened after that Alexander the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. Hey, before you get that next one, get read verse nine real quick. And let's show him. Verse this nine. Is talking about when Greece or the Caucasian man began to take over the dark nations. What does it, it say here? Now, verse, this is, remember, this is before the quote unquote dark ages. They ruled Greece, Rome. After Rome, you have the Dark Ages. We came back into power for a big time. 
then you have the Renaissance. They came back into power. Now you have America now. Okay, the, watch what it says. Verse, to come. verse 9. And after his death, they put crowns upon themselves. Someone like Alexander. After he died, he had generals that put crowns on themselves. Good. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. The Bible says that. When they took over, evils were multiplied in the earth. Now get you to his point. Chapter 3. Chapter 3 and verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So... When the Greeks, or so-called white men, took over, they took our Bible, and they started what they call whitewashing. They have pictures, if you go to Europe, Russia, you can, you can see where they have actually tried to paint over black images, right. trying to destroy our history. You'll see, you'll see like some images that have, that'll have a dark face, and then like you'll get down to the fingers, and right. some of the fingers will be dark, and then the others will be white. Like, mm -hmm. They didn't finish whitewashing it. You know, you can see, see something like that. Right. Read it again. Verse 48. And they laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. So the main heathen is talking about the white man. And the main person that he used to whitewash was Jesus the Christ. He painted him as a white car. That's an actual man named Cesar Borgia, yeah. the son of Pope Alexander VI. Did y'all know that? No, you didn't know that. See, this, this is why we're here. Because we have to we have to understand these things so we can start teaching our children, our wives, the correct history of the Bible. Because what we be given, right, in Sunday church is the quarterlies, your baby breads, you know what I'm saying? Uh, TBN, you know, they're teaching us what they see. And it's only going back to that whitewashing because they're not showing us who we are. They don't want to know. They don't want us to know who we are. No. So, so notice, um, with the book, the Bible is telling us that they would start painting their images. It says that right there in the Bible. So why do you think they want to strip those books out now so you can't find them, you can't read them? Okay? If you read that, you're like, wait a minute. They sought to paint their images? Well, why? If Jesus was always looked like that, why, why is it saying the Greeks began to do that? Because Jesus never looked like that. Okay? Neither did any of the Israelites, as we already proved, you all. The history books and the scriptures in the Bible. They always depicted as men and women of color. That's right. So, so I've got this image, Caesar Borgia. Uh, small, but you can see he's the first image of Caesar Borgia, also this one underneath. Looks identical to the Renaissance image of Christ. Caesar Borgia had an employee named Leonardo da Vinci. Some say that was also his lover. Somehow we ended up with these sketches from Leonardo da Vinci of Caesar Borgia as the new Renaissance image of Christ. These are the actors from a book called The Borgias. Those are the actual sketches. You'll find that in The Last Supper. I believe that's the most expensive painting on earth, The Last Supper, with Leon, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece of Caesar Borgia, his boss, as Christ. And white disciples. A couple women, two featured, women. Yeah, two women in there instead of men. And that was given to us, and that's in Time Magazine. Every year you'll see it in the grocery store racks. All that part of white supremacy. Can I get a scripture real quick, Captain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job 9.24. To tie the apocrypha with the Bible again, that's repeated in the Bible that those things will be covered. Those Job images. chapter 9 and verse 24. Go ahead. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Good people don't run the earth. I think we all agree on that. The principalities and powers, God calls them the wicked. Read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Now, this particular wicked covers the faces of the judges. You read that in the very beginning. The judges were the Israelites. The book of Judges is about the Israelites. This wicked covered up the Israelites with himself. Mm -hmm. That is a so-called white man. Read. Therefore, if not, thereof. Where? Oh, thereof, mm -hmm. if not, therefore. No, no, thereof. Thereof. Okay. If not, where and who is he? Well, if it's not him, then where and who is the wicked? If it's not the guy that covered up the images of the apostles, that covered up the images of Moses, Charlton Heston is Moses. However, there's distinct history that proves Moses was a black man. But the movie show, Charlton Heston, a Christian bail. And then they exclude certain parts of the Bible where Moses took his hand, went into his uh, bosom, pulled it out, and it was white. Would that make any sense if Christian Bale did that? Nothing would happen. 
That was a miracle. Then he put it back in the, the scripture says, it became as his other flesh. It would turn back brown, turn back black. So this scripture says, the wicked that took over the earth, for example, right here, Alexander the Great, he found the images of the judges and he covered them up with his images. But all the way up into God. When they say God, Christ, all white men, which you can't find any blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus in any Bible, any version of the Bible. Hey, read, read this real quick. Uh, it's a quick point. Um, I think we can get both of those up there. Yeah, this is um, Light and Truth, collected from the Bible in ancient and modern history, containing the universal history of the colored and the Indian race from the creation of the world to the present time by R.B. <laughs> Robert <laughs> Benjamin. That's, that's, a, yeah, I, that's the longest title I've read. I'm just saying Light and Truth, right? I'm yeah, a, Light and Truth. I'm going to take a picture of that. Yeah, you can take a picture. But notice it says collected from the Bible in ancient, mo ancient and modern history. Yeah. Now, uh, page. We, we can let you take pictures of the pages too, so you know. Uh, read it. Page 353. Uh, you start Isaiah. Yes, sir. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Mm -hmm. uh, jump down here. Yeah, so we just you know start flipping over so they can see. So I just highlighted that part, and then you're gonna jump down to this next part. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. But they obeyed not the word of the Lord by the mouth of the prophet, and were led away, young and old, naked and barefoot, into captivity. Notice it says into captivity. So Deuteronomy 28, 100% talking about captivity, slavery. All right, go ahead. Isaiah chapter 20. Now, this is talking about why well, Isaiah prophesied it too. Okay, you know? As they were black, so was he. As they were black, the Israelites, it says, so was he. Meaning Isaiah. Read that again. As they were black, so was he. Mm -hmm. As he was naked, so were they. Mm -hmm. Led naked and barefoot, young and old, into captivity. Yep. Even unto this day, from Africa. From where? From Africa. Mm -hmm. Their descendants are led away by a wicked people into slavery. Well, who did the Bible say? He said he would put yokes of honor on the next. This calls it a wicked people. He just read in Job that said the earth is given to the wicked and they will cover the faces of the judges. They will obscure who the Israelites are with their images. Read it again. It says, even unto this day, from Africa, yeah. their descendants are led now, away. Why is it saying, notice it's talking about Africa, but this is going into Isaiah prophesying about the Israelites. But it says they will be led away captive from Africa. Remember I read it earlier in Luke 21, Christ said, Remember, he said, we see Jerusalem surrounded by armies fleeing to the mountains. That was somehow further into Africa. That's what it was talking about. Okay, and then it said they should be led away captive into all nations from there. Same, same thing here. Okay, read it again. Even unto this day, from Africa, their descendants are led away by a wicked people into slavery. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time yep. to recover the remnant of his people. Which shall be left. Now that they're quoting a scripture in Isaiah chapter 11. Right? I think it's 11 and 11, right? Correct. They're quoting this here. It says he should be what? But it shall come to pass that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Why does it say the second time? Because the first time he sent Christ to die for them, for us, so we can repent of our sins. Okay, now the second time is to redeem us from all nations if we repent. Okay, we're good. From Assyria, from Egypt. From Pathros, from Cush, yep. from Shinar, or Chaldea, from Elam, from Hamaf, and from the islands of the sea. All those different landmasses, right? The Lord shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Right. Now give me the next one. I, I just really wanted out of that that it said, um, as they were black, so was he, talking about Isaiah. Now, you read this earlier about Jeremiah, right? Correct. So watch what it says here. This is page 354. Jeremiah, the prophet, was the son of Hilkiah. The words of Jeremiah to his friends, thus saith the prophet, chapter 8, verse 21. Quote, I am black, end quote. Here, he describes himself to be black. Yeah, here, they knew it was a description. Because like you said, what Caucasian man would say, I am black? He wouldn't say that. So it, it was twofold, yes. He was describing his physical condition as well as their physical condition or their condition as a community. Okay, read it again. 
Our skin, oh, Lamentations, verse 10. Our skin, this is a quote, quote, our skin was black like an oven, mm -hmm. end quote. Here he describes his people. They are black. Yeah, here he describes his people. Okay, it is a nice start. Quote, they are black unto or on the ground, mm -hmm. mourning because of the terrible famine, end quote. Right. Jeremiah uh, 14. Yeah, 14. So that's, that's it. Okay, so more, more on color. I mean, we could go all day on color, but what questions y'all got? Anything? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, we, we touched on um, Greece, right? Mm -hmm. Alexander the Greek, they began to take over and start whitewashing our images even in uh, Greece. Give me Genesis 25. Want me to start at 21? Or? Yeah. Now, now, what, the reason why we're going here is um, we touched on all the color scriptures pertaining to the Israelites. Okay, let's see when the difference came in in the Bible. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Mm -hmm. And this the children. Isaac. Now, read, read a little bit. Y'all got it too? Y'all got it? Okay, they're looking at it. All right, good. Go verse, verse 21. And Isaac entreated of the, the Lord for his wife. Read a little bit slower. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Right, so she couldn't have kids. He prayed to the Most High, and then he opened up her womb. What? And the children struggled together within her. Mm -hmm. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Right. The children, the two children struggled within her. There was a fight in the womb from the beginning. You don't? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Right. Two nations are in your womb, and two manner of people shall be separated. Now, it wasn't two billion people in there. It's just two men, and they were the forefathers of two different nations. Okay? Read on. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. One people shall be stronger than the other people. Remember we read earlier, if the Israelites kept the commandments, he would set them on high above all nations. Here, God is talking about two sons out of the same mother and father. He says one will be stronger than the other. So God never created everybody to be equal at all. Okay, read on. And the elder shall serve the younger. The elder, the first boy, is created to serve the younger boy. Read on. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Mm -hmm. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Now the first child came out red all over like a hairy garment. Go ahead. And his and they called him his name Esau. They called his name Esau, which means wasted away as he. Okay. Yeah, that's not, is, is something there over? Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. It means wasted away, meaning what? There's no melanin in this boy's skin. The blood shows through his skin. That's why the first came out red. You have brown melanin like we have. Frito. And after that came his brother out. Yeah. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. Now it's describing his brother, but it didn't give his physical depiction. It said, what did read that part? Of and after that and came his. Notice it says the first came out red all over. It says, after that, what? And after that came his brother out. Yep. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So the, the second boy, his hand came out and grabbed the first boy's heel. But it didn't tell us what he looked like. Read on. And his name was called Jacob. His name is called Jacob. Now, remember we read earlier in that book, it says they all descended from brown ancestors. Remember it mentioned Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why they didn't describe what Jacob looked like. Because everybody else was brown prior to this boy coming out red. Okay, this is the birth of the first Caucasian on the earth, right? All right? Read on. And Isaac was three scores years old when she bare them. Right, go ahead. And, and the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter. Who are your hunters today? Esau was a cunning hunter. Who's our hunters today? Okay, we all know who it is. Okay, they go out in the fields, have, you know, spread deer piss on themselves. They're, they're the best. They're the best at it. God gave him that from the beginning. He was a cunning hunter. You don't they don't. They're the yeah. only nation you have to tell to stop hunting. 
Mm-hmm. Like you, you might say, what well, Africans they hunt or, or down in no, 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 elephants, rhinoceroses till extinction. Yeah, that's not us. Yeah, what happened to the buffalo here in America? Right, a yeah. mountain of buffalo skulls. Yeah, cunning hunter. You know, a man of the field. A man of the field. Were you? And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. <clears throat> Remember, brown. That's y'all. We just like to kick back, you know, chill in the house. Okay, Jacob, what? And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Mm-hmm. And Isaac loved Esau mm-hmm. because he did eat of his venison. So it says Isaac loved Esau, the red boy, because he went out hunting. He was like, hey, this boy come back with food and everything. Okay, so he liked that, you know? But Rebecca loved Jacob. Rebecca loved Jacob. Remember, she was told by the Most High that one people shall be stronger than the other, the elder should serve the younger. So she already knew prophetically the Most High was already dealing with the younger boy. We don't. And Jacob sought pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. Jacob was cooking. Esau was faint. He came from the field. He didn't catch anything that day. Go ahead. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. Esau, the red boy, said to Jacob, I'm hungry. Feed me with that same red pottage. Meaning the food he was cooking was not done yet. He said, Feed me with that same red pottage. The meat was undone. Okay, so now, so far we got Esau. He came out red. He didn't have melanin. He's a cunning hunter, and he also eats meat before it's fully cooked. It's the same people today. Same people today. It's same same you, you ruined the steak if yeah. it's not rare. If, yeah. it's, if it's well done, you ruined it. Can I get this in the yeah, yeah, real yeah, quick? This is Liver King. Liver King, yeah. Liver King. Y'all gonna look him up on YouTube. Liver King. He eats raw meat. He's not alone. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. Out, out, out the meat poultry. What color is he? That's red. That's why they want to tell you that ruddy always means red in the bottom. That's why they want to tell you that. Because God said they're red. Okay? Not the Native American. Oh, they're different shades of brown. Some of them. We, we get it through mixing, mm. quote unquote, throughout the years. But generally speaking, no. Okay? That's, that's what they look like. Yeah, and we're going into the color because this is Genesis. This is the beginning of all nations. Right, yeah. So that initial ancestor. Yeah, we know because my brother right here is a different shade than us. But we know through mixings, like Cap said, the conquistadors or whatnot, you got people of different shades. Even us, among African Americans, you got light skin. So it's not a, you got to be a paper bag color to get something. That's not what we're talking about here. Though I do want to show that term red here. In the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, it defines what kind of red it's talking about. If you Google Esau, it's going to show you a red headed guy. And say that's what it meant by red. It's he, just, hair. he just had red hair, right? Yeah. yeah. You gotta stay from Google. It says uh red. You read that for me? Red. Mm-hmm. A blood like or a blood red color. Mm-hmm. Adjective red. Mm-hmm. Is applied to the following items. So they have numbered items where red is applied in the Bible. Go ahead. The badger skins dyed red, which formed the outward covering of the tabernacle. Go ahead. Two. The color of a certain animal. Go ahead. Now watch number three. Uh, number three, the color of the human skin. So it said, one instance in the Bible, red was referred to as the color of human skin. Where's the reference? Right next to it, parentheses. Genesis 25 and 25. So the scholars who put this together said, in Genesis 25, 25, red was used to describe skin, not hair. Yes, he was also hairy, but it was talking about red, melanin, melanin lacking skin. I mean, the blood show forth through the veins. So I got the baby book yeah. name. If you need. Okay. okay. Say so, yeah. I got the baby book name, the Hebrew baby book name. Yeah, grab, grab it real quick. Just real quick. It's right there. Um, let's see. So Genesis 25, 25. the identity of the race is important. We gotta know who, who we are really. You know what I'm saying? We gotta know the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans are physically, which we are the Israelites. White man has a biblical name, his name is Esau or Edom. Uh, the Arabs, they have a biblical name, which is uh, Ishmael, yeah. right? So forth and so on. So it's important for us to know who's who in the Bible. So when we get to the New Testament, we ain't confused on there's neither Jew nor Greek. You know what I mean? Because we un- we're, we, once we understand the Old Testament and the nation's place in the no- Old Testament, when we get to the New Testament, we won't be confused. Because God already got judgments for all those nations. They already set. But what Christianity has done 
when you read John 3, 16, right? Yeah. They want to put everybody inside the covenants. Mm -hmm. Now everybody can get salvation. And God never rolled like that in the Old Testament. Never. Remember we read it from the very beginning. If the Israelites obeyed, he would set them on high above all nations. Correct. Now Christ come on the scene and they say, oh, he loves everybody now. Right. You never said that. Okay. So, oh yeah. yeah uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, so yeah. Come so on. this book is by Judith Tropia, a scholar, classical biblical baby names. She's Jewish. She's Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, this is under the name Esau, uh, meaning Harry, of interest. That's at the very bottom. Uh, according to the commentaries on Hebrew scripture, Esau is considered a significant character in world history and a forefather of the Roman Empire. Wait a minute. It says Esau is the forefather of the Roman Empire. Can you show him that? Yeah. Let me see that. Let's just say the bottom. The bottom. Okay. Now, if you just think about what the Bible describes Esau is looking like, then that makes sense to me now. Esau is the forefather of the Roman Empire. Now, the reason why we, we didn't finish Genesis 25 yet, was there more than that? We might have yeah, got we're, to we're, no, yeah, he's yeah. almost done, almost done. Yeah, finish real quick. And, and verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pot. Right. For so, I am so faint. Again, he, was, he came out red. He was also hairy. Uh, he was a hunter. And now he's eating uncooked meat. Go ahead. Therefore, his, was his name called Edom. Therefore was his name called Edom, which means red now, because he, he went after that red meat. So it's no longer, not no longer, but it was wasted away as he being Esau. Edom means red. Now give me the precept in Hebrews just to show him Paul understood what that red pottage meant that Esau ate. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Now, this was thousands of years ago. But Paul is saying there's a profane person named Esau written in the Bible. How he knew that? Because he read it. Okay. Read it again. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Notice, one morsel of meat. So that red pot is just meat in there. Uh, oftentimes, commentaries will say, oh, it was just beans, beans something lentils, like that. Lentils. lentils, it was just red beans. No, Paul understood it was meat. Read again. Verse 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Right, one morsel of meat, okay, sold his birthright. Meaning what? He said, give me the meat and you can have my birthright. He traded it off. I'm not sure if y'all heard that before, but he traded his birthright uh, for the red meat. Okay, all that was designed by God. Okay. Um, it's more, yeah, come on. Verse 17. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, as the firstborn, he would have inherited the blessing. He was rejected. He was rejected. Okay, go ahead. Watch For this. he found no place of repentance. You see that? No place of repentance. Okay. If Christ is gone, dead, rose by, he says there, he has no place of repentance. Okay, I thought Christ came for the whole world. No, read that part again. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Right, and Paul wasn't, he wasn't writing that to say it changed now in Christ. He's reaffirming that he saw that same wicked before, no place of repentance for him. So, now that said, he saw it was the forefather of the Roman Empire. Now, I got another one, modern Judaism. All right, give me that, um, page 231. Page 231. First, that the descendants of Esau, the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob. Now, wait a minute. Read that part again, slow. First, that the descendants of Esau, the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, even to the end of the world. Esau is the sworn enemy of us, it says, to the end of the world. Remember, God's. God told Moses, if the Israelites break their commandments, break his commandments, he would have their enemies put yokes of iron on their necks. The same red Esau, same, same brother, he, he allowed them to do that. They're our sworn enemy. Remember from the womb they were fighting. Remember she said, if it be so, why am I thus? While they were fighting in the womb, even to this very day. Read that part again. That the descendants of Esau, the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, even to the end of the world. Yeah, come on. You can just read that. Read that whole were at the, 
at first a small nation, they were a small nation, yeah. inhabiting Mount Sierra and the adjacent country. Mm -hmm. Continuous. That's in the Bible. You read about Mount Sierra in the Bible. Go ahead. Uh, continuous to the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. that they were Israel, right? that they were easily confined within their own limits, as long as the Israelites enjoyed a great and formidable formidable empire in Canaan. Mm -hmm. But that after the powerful republic of the twelve tribes was destroyed by the Assyrians in Babylonia. After we that part slow again? But that after the powerful republic of the twelve tribes mm -hmm. was destroyed mm -hmm. by the Assyrians and Babylonians. Right. Oh, no. They wonderfully increased in numbers and strength. Talking about Esau Edom. Okay. After we were destroyed, they increased in strength. It's the same thing now. Again, I mentioned it earlier. After we fell, well, they remember they fell uh, as the Romans. We took over, we were the Dark Ages. So when we fell, they took they took over again. It's the same thing. Okay, go ahead. Extended their dominion towards the west. Mm -hmm. Spread their colonies. They, they extended their dominion towards the west. Go ahead. Spread their colonies far and wide. Watch what it says. Esau did. Three. Subjugated Italy. Esau subjugated Italy. Founded Rome. Founded Rome Go and the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire. Is that it? At lengthy, at length, entirely overturned the Jewish state. They overturned our country. They overturned the Jewish state. Israel. Come on. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I gotta get that. Yeah. Yes. This, this Which had been restored after the termination of the Babylonian captivity. Mm -hmm. The second temple being destroyed by Titus Vespasian. Now that was 70 A.D. One of the events Christ was prophesying about in Luke 21 we were earlier. Read on watch this. It's a point I want to see. Sure no. And that in the present day. He's still talking about Edom. In the present day. Professing the religion of Jesus of Nazareth. They profess the religion of who? Jesus of Nazareth. They even painted themselves as such. Okay, it says they profess the religion of Jesus. They're not, they're not they don't follow Christ. Read on. Which they were the first of all nations to embrace. Which they were the first of all nations to embrace. They called themselves not only Jewish, but now Christians now. Okay? They start, they converted back in, during the time of Greece, they started converting. We might get that too, but they started back then, now Christians. But they hold the dominion over all Europe. They hold the dominion over all Europe. It's talking about Esau. Who rules Europe? We know who that is. The Bible told you what they look like. Now these history books are backing up what the Bible is saying. They rule Europe, go ahead. Esau detaining in captivity his brother Jacob. You see that? To this very day. Who were we sold to? It's it told us in the Bible that enemy would put yokes of iron on their necks. We know who did it. Now it's telling us Esau here. But the Bible already said it. Remember it says he would exalt himself as the evil? We didn't read that part. We read... We read, um, that's over that. That's over that. We read in Deuteronomy, it said, um, uh, fly like as an eagle. As swift as swift the eagle as fly. It said that. As swift as the eagle. So the eagle, like I said, Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Great Britain, even America. Go ahead. It says, they hold the dominion over all Europe. Esau detaining his, in captivity, his brother Jacob. Yeah. The Israelites. At, at least as far as regards the tribe of Judah. That's the silver of Negroes, the tribe of Judah, you know? Till his Messiah, Ben David, shall appear. That's talking about Christ. That's the purpose of Christ's second return. I said it earlier, the little move touched on no man shall buy you or save you. Because Christ is coming back. It says, until what? Until the Messiah, Ben David, shall appear. Messiah means, uh, it says Ben David means the son of David. Okay? Come on. Secondly, that the prophecies of the prophets against Esau, Edom, Seir, and the cities of Edom, especially those of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Obadiah, have not yet received their full accomplishment. It's telling us right here, the prophecies that you can read about in, in the Bible, like about Esau's destruction, has not come to pass yet. They still rule to this very day. Okay, go ahead. Oh, uh, you want to jump down or? Uh, yeah, please. Uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Right, right here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Titus and the transportation of the Jews into captivity, in which they are still most appropriately detained. Notice, T Titus, and that was again 70 AD, um, 30 some odd years after Christ, when Jerusalem was sacked and we began to disperse into Africa and so forth. Hundreds, thousands of years later, then they began to round us up on ships from Africa and those different areas. 
But it says Titus and what? And the transportation of the Jews into captivity. The Jews into captivity. Remember, we read all the color scriptures about what the Jews look like. Brown people led into captivity. Right? In which they are still most appropriately detained. Remember it said, no man shall buy thee, no man shall save thee. This is telling us they are still most appropriately detained to this day, still in captivity. Right? Is yet impending over it mm -hmm. to be executed in the time of the Messiah. You see that? He's the one. We're still in captivity. That's why, like, when we say things like we're in captivity and because y'all feel like y'all can go to work freely or y'all, you know, y'all can go to the grocery store as you want to, go to the movies, go buy some liquor, whatever the case, get a woman. We say, oh, we're not, we're not in captivity. No, we are. Okay. We are still detained by Esau, you know. That because you know why? We're not in our kingdom. Look, the money that we spend got somebody else's face on it. But we say we're free. You got a slave owner? Yes. Mm -hmm. Slave owner. Okay. Read that again. That this is foretold. Oh, I'll jump back up. Titus and the transportation of the Jews into captivity, in which they are still most appropriately detained, is yet impending over it, yeah. to be executed in the time of the Messiah. Right. Now, now, now. Let's just pause real quick. Okay. Luke uh, 1. That one. Oh, yeah. He's got it right. over Jacob for him. Luke 168. Luke, oh, 168? Yeah. I got you. Yep. Yeah. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, mm. for he had visited and redeemed his people. Meaning he sent Christ to, to redeem us, to give us a chance to come back to the Father. You know? And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us. Notice it says for us, for Israel. Mm. In the house of his servant David. That's why that said, that's why that said uh, Messiah ben David, because he was from the lineage of David. You know? As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, Watch this. that we should be saved from our enemies. That's the purpose of Christ, that we should be saved from our enemies. Go ahead. And from all, from the hand. Oh, sorry. And from the hand of all that hate us. That we should be saved from our enemies and the hand of all that hate us. Remember, uh, who did it say took over Rome? Or who ruled Rome? According to the books we've read so far? Alexander. Esau, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 His people, yeah, yeah. the same people. Yeah. But Esau. The, the, the Bible, this is um this is Zechariah, right? That's Zechariah reading? No, Luke right now. Luke no, 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 that's who's speaking. Yes. Oh, Zechariah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That's Zechariah, which is, um, help me out. John, John the Baptist's father. father. Right. That's right. John the Baptist's father. He's speaking. Okay. So Zechariah said what again? 71? Verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Right. This is during the time of Rome. Okay. <clears throat> Esau ruled during that time. Okay. You got something to look at? Yes. Remember the rulers of Rome, well, the, the appointed by Rome over the uh, Jews was Herod, the Herodians. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to read in the Zondervan who the Herodians were. It says Herod. Idumian rulers of Palestine. Idumian rulers of Palestine. Very interesting. Is that it on it? Uh, I'll read a little more. Line started with Antipater. Now, now we got we got to define Idumian in a second, but it says an Idumian ruler of Palestine. Right. Line started with Antipater, whom Julius Caesar made procur uh, um, procurator of Judea in 47 BC. Right. Now, here is Idumian. Uh, Idumian. Greek and Roman name for Edom. See that? So that term Idumia is a Greek or Roman name for Edom. So the same people. Okay, so Herod, we read about Herod in the Bible. That was a white man. Okay, he was made uh, ruler over Judea at that time. So that's why Zechariah was able to say, we need, we need Christ. We need a savior from our enemies. Okay? Is it more than that? Luke? Get, yeah. Oh, no. It, yeah, that's uh, verse 172 Just read 71, 71. 71 That we should be saved from our enemies And from the hand of all that hate us Is that more or less? Uh, mm, no that's about it so, so let's finish this okay. Okay. Real quick can we get Acts 1 Because they said Because they thought when Christ stepped on the scene It was time to go home right? Read that real quick Acts 1 and verse 6 
When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Now, now keep in mind, I'm in Luke, and he said that we should be saved from our enemies, right? Mm -hmm. And at this time, we're in Roman captivity, the Israelites, right? Go ahead. Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So this is before Christ getting ready to send back to the Father. They asked of them, Lord, will you now at this time restore the kingdom back to Israel? Showing you, they, they knew when he stepped on the scene, it was time to regather the 12 tribes. But not at this time. When he come back the second time, it will be the regathering of the 12 tribes to rule this planet again. That's, that's why we out here on these streets like this. Because we're trying to wake the Israelites up, which are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, so we can get our kingdom back. Right now, we're in the white man's kingdom. That's, that's just what it is. Go, go back to Luke real quick, 1 and 77. If you read further down, because we heard salvation and we get the term, it gets mixed up. It has to do with our sins. It has to do with deliverance from our enemies. This sums it up great. Read that. 71? 77. 77. Mm -hmm. To give knowledge. This, this is Luke 1. Luke 1, Luke 1 yeah. and 77. Mm -hmm. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people. Now, I'm sorry, 76. It's talking about grace. verse 76. Mm -hmm. And thou... And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. Uh -huh. For thou shalt be, shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. That's John. Go ahead. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people. Now his people, that's the Israelites. Read. By the remission of their sins. We get salvation by repentance. So it's not just, oh, we're saved from our sins. Getting, uh, gaining repentance from our sins. Gets us to salvation. Mm -hmm. We must repent for God to turn his face back to us. In Hosea 5.15, he says, I will go and return to my place until you acknowledge your offense and seek my face. That's part of John's mission. Lead the way for Christ. That's what Christ came to do. Israel, listen, repent. It says repent and be converted. Be changed. Yep. That your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Which goes into what Officer Michelle brought out. The kingdom being restored as it was proph uh, prophesied in Daniel 7. Restored to Israel. We're always meant to come back into our kingdom. This is just a temporary punishment. Now as a God, this ain't even long. This is brief. That's a good point. Good point. Let's let's finish this again. Yes, sir. All right. Again, let's finish. All right. So we left off. Titus and the transportation of the Jews into captivity, in which they are still most appropriately detained, is yet impending over it. To be executed in the time of the Messiah. Same thing we just read based on the scriptures. It says that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Again, back to Deuteronomy. He said, no man shall buy you, no man shall save you. Go ahead. That this is foretold by the prophets in all their denunciations. You see, it's foretold by the prophets in all their denunciations. Come on. Of the severest plagues against the house of Esau, mm -hmm. the cities of Edom. And Mount Sierra, which all belong to Rome yeah. and the Christians. And who? The Christians. So it's telling us, again, the same people that painted themselves as Christ or with the Christians now, that's Esau. And this is saying the same thing. Read that part again, please. In all. That in all, which all belong to Rome and the Christians. Mm -hmm. and read, read it up. Oh, all within, yeah, uh, the prophets part. All right. So it says that, uh, that this is foretold by the prophets. In all their denunciations of the severest plagues against the house of Esau. Now, now, let's just get one real quick and open that. For example, right? it says it's foretold by all the prophets about about Esau. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, yeah, does it mention Esau in that yeah, verse? Eighteen. Yeah. Okay, watch. Obadiah, verse eighteen. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. And the house both, that's both kingdoms coming back together, but and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. You see that? Now that's Obadiah in the quote unquote Old Testament. He says there should not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For who spoke it? For the Lord hath spoken it. So if that already happened, how did they take over Rome? How do they rule Rome if that already happened? They didn't. That didn't happen yet. That's why they know here, historically, it's judgments in the Bible to a particular nation that have not happened yet. Finish that up. It says, uh, and that the fate of Christians at that time. That, 
that the fate of Christians at that time, meaning when Christ comes back, so-called Christians, again, this is talking about Christianity. They just use the word Christian there, but it's talking about the Edomites that profess Christianity. Go ahead. At that time will be far more dreadful than that of the Mohammedans. Meaning, meaning Muslims, okay? Meaning the, the Caucasians that call themselves Christians, their judgment is going to be worse. We just ran when they always died. Okay, read on. I'm going to jump down and straight down? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, Arbanel, particularly... Nah, just get to the high. Okay. Uh, jumping down, it says, But of the Christians, Obadiah says... Okay, we just read that. I didn't know that was there. I forgot. Yeah. It says, Of the Christians, Obadiah... Why does it say Christian there? Mm. The, the Bible said... What? Esau. 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 It didn't say Christian. The house of Esau. Yeah, it didn't say Christian in the Bible, but they know who it's talking about. Okay, read again. But of the Christians... Obadiah says, there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. It's telling you the house of Esau calls themselves Christians today. They established a religion of Christianity under the Roman Catholic Church, which all denominations uh, branch out of to this day. Right. Okay. They set up the cross with the white image, and they, they call themselves Christians, and the Jews as well. You want Matthew 24, 5? Yeah. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. Mm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Right. Many shall come. Who did that? Okay. The Roman Catholic Church. Okay. And you touched on it earlier, right? What was the uh, father's name again? Pope? Uh, Pope Alexander. Pope Alexander VI. Pope Alexander VI of Rome uh, <clears throat> commissioned Leonardo and so forth to paint Caesar Borgia. Okay. Many shall come to what? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. That's why this says the Christians here, okay? They, they profess Christianity, okay? You know? And shall deceive many. Right. Great deception. Because remember, there's no Bible scripture that says Jesus looked like that. That has blonde hair, blue eyes, pale skin. But everybody believes it. That image under the true image at the top, everybody believes it. That's what it means by many. It don't mean like 13 or a couple hundred. Yeah. It means millions. Millions of people across the planet Earth, okay, still in the churches to this very day. Hey. That's why I said it's here that judgment is going to be greater than the Muslims because they see many. Go ahead. In the land of Brazil, they have a big, tall statue. Y'all see that? I'm going to speak. Of the white image of Jesus Christ. Deceiving our people. Can I say something? Yeah. Um, can I get 2 Corinthians 11 and 4? Because, uh, you know, they say that we're different. They say Latinos and blacks are different, right? Uh, well, before you get that, can you get Jeremiah 15, 33, showing that we got conquered at the same time? If y'all research the history, the Moors got conquered off the hill. So, just real quick. So, he, again, he's Officer Issachar. <coughs> y'all label him as Mexican, but your tribe is what? Issachar. Issachar, according to the Bible. He's one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah, so the Aztecs. Okay, um... So, you know, if you do your research, and I know you guys probably do, um, if you go back to 1492, right, off of Granada, Seville, all the, all the places in, uh, in Spain and stuff, right, y'all were called the Moors. That's why it's Latin for Moreno. That's why we call y'all Morenos, right? So, in the Bible, it's prophetic. We're going to read it, Jeremiah 50, verse 32. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord of hosts. The children of Israel mm -hmm. and the children of Judah. So children of Israel is prophetic to the northern kingdom after the split. And the Judah are the southern kingdom, right? Those are your Jamaicans, your Haitians, and your blacks, right? Read. We're oppressed together. We have always been oppressed together. That's why when you when they conquered the Dark Ages, right? Because that's what they called it, the Dark Ages. The Aztecs were black. The Native Americans were black. The, uh, the Cubans were black. The Puerto Ricans were black. But they didn't have those, those names. Those names are not biblical. So what happens is we got conquered at the same time, 1492, and now Paul is going to give us what happened to us right when the boats landed in Mexico and Puerto Rico. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. For he that cometh preaching another Jesus. That's the same thing Christ said. Many shall come in my name, saying I'm Christ. They came to the, to the Aztec capital and said, hey, gave us a cross and said, I am a Christian. They said, if you guys don't stop killing each other with hearts and all that, uh, y'all need to follow white Jesus. That's what they did to us, right? Read. Whom we have not preached. Because Paul did not preach a white Jesus. And when you read um, throughout the whole Bible, you know that he was a black man. Read. Or 
if he receive another spirit. So that's what happens. Today we have another spirit, right? Women wearing pants. I don't know if you guys know, but women wearing pants, that was not a tradition of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We always had our women in dresses, right? Read. Which ye have not received, mm -hmm. or another gospel. Another what? Another gospel. John 3.16, meaning that it means everybody. That's another gospel because John 3.16 was in the Bible when they were hanging Mexicans, Aztecs, Native Americans, blacks. That scripture was manipulated after they already taught us servants obey your masters. Because in slavery, when we're in hard bondage, they use one scripture, servants obey your masters, so we can be good slaves. But now that we mingle with them or we go to the same jobs as them, they're like, okay, what scripture shall we give them now so they can be good servants? Which is John 3.16 or love your enemy, uh, forgive your enemy, Matthew 5.44. They'll give you those scriptures. They didn't read us those scriptures when we were, when Nat Turner was alive. No. You know what I'm saying? When they killed Nat Turner and they, you know, did all the atrocities to our people, they didn't read those certain scriptures. So a new gospel today is God loves everybody. When you read the Bible, it says God hates Esau. So for when you ask a Christian that, they'll shut up because they don't understand that when they gave us a new image, they also gave us a new teaching. That's all I got. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Mm. That's that judgment I was talking about here. Mm -hmm. That Christian. the fate of the Christians. You might suffer along with those that brought the false image of Christ. The blasphemy. Any questions? <laughs> Comments? Concerns? Um, no question. So, um, okay. So, what is, what is the purpose of this? Okay, again, you got to know who you are. Like Mr. Officer Mr. Al said earlier, we got to know who the other nations are in the Bible. Okay, so when we get to the New Testament, we're not confused. So now, we understand, based on what we brought out so far, that Esau or Edom found in Greece, they also found in Rome. Same people. Now, give me uh, Maccabees about uh, what happened to the Israelites. Um, I guess you can start at chapter 1, 40-ish. 40, okay. And then 796. The democracy? Yeah. Okay. 43. First, first Maccabees, chapter 1. Now remember, this is, uh, to keep it as context, go back to chapter 1 and 1 again. First Maccabees, 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. And it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim. Alexander. Had, Alexander. Go ahead. Had smitten Darius, the king of the Persians, and Medes. That he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So again, we're reading about what happened during the Greek history or the intertestamental history, right. period. Verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. He wrote, this is, remember, he had four generals and Antiochus came out of the Seleucid line. He wrote to his kingdom that all should be one people, right? That's democracy. Hey, let's all do the same thing, guys. Come on, guys. Let's... Yeah, there's also universalism, yeah. which is what Cap uh, Catholic, Catholic means. means. Yeah. Okay, all for one. Read it again. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Remember, this is not biblical because God said if the Israelites obey, I'm going to set them on high above all. That's, what's, that's God's purpose. But now they, they want to come in and say we should all be the same. We should all do the same thing. Let's worship together. You know? And everyone should leave his laws. Mm -hmm. So all the heathen agreed to the commandment of the king. Now watch this. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Being one people with everybody is a religion. God never set it up like that. God said Israel to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. But many of the Israelites consented. They said, okay, yeah, we're going to do what y'all do. We're going to follow what y'all do. We're going to keep Christmas. We're going to keep Easter. Okay? We're going to celebrate birthdays. Right. And we're going to keep these, these customs, right? Go ahead. And sacrifice unto idols yep. and profane the Sabbath. Yeah, we're going to no longer keep the Sabbath. We don't care about that. We'll worship on Sunday. We don't. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and to the cities of Judah. Notice it says he sent letters to Jerusalem and Judah. Read. And that they should follow the strange laws of the land. That they should do what everybody else is doing. God never designed it for us to do what everybody else is doing. That's a strange law. We don't and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice. Back then, because we did sacrifice. Now, Christ came to do away with that. We no longer have to sacrifice. We don't. And drink offerings in the temple. Yep. And that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days. Come on. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Set up altars and groves. 
and chapels of idols, yep. and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. Is it? Verse 48. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profi profanation. 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 To the end that they might forget the law. That's the point. To the end that they might what? Forget the law and change all the ordinances. That's the point. So when you assimilate yourself with everybody else, you forget God's law. You detach yourself from God's law and we start doing what everybody else is doing. We don't. Verse 50. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, mm. he said he should die. He said he should die. Is that it? Go, 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 that's, that's heavy right there. Because then we find in the New Testament. Remember, this is the intertestament. How do you say intertestament? Intertestament. There you go. That is, that is a mouthful. But you find after that in Rome certain things, especially in Paul's writings, it seems like he's speaking against the commandments. Yet in some parts, he's saying keep the commandments. But we see here, it was forbidden after the Greek captivity to do certain of the commandments. For example, circumcision. Can you read that portion? Did you already read that? Yeah, 48. Yeah, 48. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. So that's where there's a controversy about circumcision. The Greek law was do not circumcise your children. Read. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Read on. To the end that they might forget the law. You want to forget that the covenant Abraham had. It's before Moses. People are the law of Moses. Abraham had that covenant. Read. And change all the ordinances. They wanted everything changed from Israel to paganism. And here we find ourselves in this present world in the midst of much paganism. Second Maccabees 6 and 6. I think you want to get it next, right? Yep. Second Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 6. You got to touch on this one. Start at one. Yeah. Verse yeah. 1. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. You see that? Uh, uh, that? That's again repeating the purpose we read in chapter 1. We want you out of God's laws. We want you to move on to this new thing, this new religion we have for you. Read. But the point I wanted read was. Yeah, read it. Read it. Oh, after, yes. Yeah. And not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens. To compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their father. Notice it says he sent an old man of Athens. So he sent a Greek to right. compel us to leave our laws. Same thing. Let's, let's do the same thing. Brother. Exactly. Don't, don't do it with that Bible stuff, okay? Go ahead. Verse 6. Verse, Verse 2. Two. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. And to pollute all also the temple of Jerusalem. So they're not going to leave the, the sanctuary or the temple alone. No, pollute it. Read. And to call it the temple of Jupiter. They want to put their gods in there. Read. Olympus mm -hmm. and that the now Jupiter is also Zeus right? garrison of Jupiter and the defender of the strangers as they did desire that dwell in the in the place so it wasn't enough that oh you're going to do our religion I want you to convert what you're doing into paganism let's stick Jupiter in there with the the prized um, temple let's stick Jupiter in there let's put uh, swine's flesh in there they do that as well Read verse 6. Verse 6. He's going to jump down. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. It was against the Greek custom. It was against what they wanted the Israelites to do to keep the Sabbath. Read. Or ancient feasts. No Passover. No Pentecost. No tabernacles. Read. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Now that's very key. You're not allowed to call yourself a Jew anymore. You see that today. Nick Cannon. He came. I don't know if y'all seen that. He got in some trouble a year or two ago. He said, oh, he, had a, uh, he had a guy, an Ice Cube. Now, Nick Cannon had a guy on his radio show, a podcast, and he was breaking down that, oh, the blacks go back to the Bible. We are the Israelites. We are the Jews. He had to do an apology tour and recon everything he said. And all of a sudden, he ends up with a TV show. Because it's not allowed for us to say we're the Jews. They took his Wild and Out show. Yeah, they took the Wild and Out show from him that he built until he, he conceded. He bowed down. It was against the law, and it still is against the law, to say you're a Jew. It's called anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic. You say anything against those people who Christ said the land be trotted down of the Gentiles to this day. If you say that you're in any way those people, you're anti-Semitic. I made that word. How can we be anti-Semitic if we come from Shem as well? Esau comes from Shem. The Arabs come from Shem. But it only pertains to the Jewish man. That's all part of that scripture right there. Right. Remember, now, that, to that point, I'm glad you said that because, remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their forefather is Shem. So remember, Isaac had two sons. He had Esau and Jacob. 
So yes, they are Shemitic, and so are we. So we, we can't be anti ourselves. Right. Go ahead. Verse seven. Now, after this Helen, it's called Hel um, Hellenization or assimilation, as you would say, called today, colonization. After we return to them, read verse seven. And in the day of the king's birthday, the birth, king, king's okay. birth, every month. Now, initially, they were doing this king's birth day every month. Read. They were brought by bitter constraint. They didn't want to do it. Bitter constraint. Read. To eat of the sacrifice. That's what happened on birthdays. It's sacrifices. Come on. The cake, when you look up the cake, it's called a nerd cake. No one asks any questions about what we're doing. There's candles on said cake to blow out. The smoke goes up and you make a wish. My question is to who? Who grant your wish? God don't grant, he don't grant wishes. It goes to Artemis. Artemis is a Greek god. It's a white woman. She, re she receives the smoke. The same way the Most High used to receive the smoke of our offerings, Artemis, you can look it up, receives the smoke of those candles on that moon cake, nerd cake, also means it's shaped like a moon. She receives that offering from you and grants your wish. No one asks any question. No one in the Bible says get a cake, put the number of candles according to your age on there. No, it's pagan. They were doing it here in Greece. Come on. And where the Feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in and process and procession. In procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. So then we were forced to do those traditions. Just like in chattel slavery, we were beaten and forced to do Sunday service. Everything we know about the Bible was beaten into us. We weren't allowed to read it, but we were taught it. Why can't we just read it? Because we we're going to dictate what you know and what you do. A bunch of pagan things. Verse 9. Verse 9. And whoso would... Get, get eight to verse 8. Yeah. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighboring cities of the heathen by the suggestion of the Ptolemy against the Jews mm -hmm. that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. It's not optional. you got to do it. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles mm -hmm. should be put to death. Then so uh, picture this. All right, so the birthday party is going on. I'm not going. What happens? You die. Guess what the Jews are doing? Are we doing birthdays now? Or you die. Go ahead should be put to death. Mm. Then might a man have seen the present misery. Right. So now, that's good. Now, so let's, let's back it up with this bar right here. So remember, all that was set up to make us forget our laws, right? Read that part again to the end of 1st Maccabees 1. You said verse 1? 1st Maccabees chapter, chapter, chapter 1, 1 verse 41. 41 no, no, to the end, that point. 49. 40, yeah, 48, somewhere. Uh, to the end, okay, 49. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. Right, so let's all be one people. To the end, meaning that was the purpose. What, what was, was that again? First Maccabees 1 and verse 49. Read again. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. Forget the law and change all the ordinances. They want us to forget that stuff. Now, watch this. This is uh, the book From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor. Uh, page 123. 123. We're about last paragraph, roughly. Okay. It is written, they have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in their remembrance. So now that's, he's quoting the book of Psalms 83. Three, three. Psalms 83. Can we just get it just real quick? Yes, sir. Just to show what Psalms doing. chapter 83, verse 2. Look for lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate tumult, thee tumult an angry gather. They come together collectively, correct? And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They that hate Israel and God have lifted up their head, correct? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Mm -hmm. This that, is called the United Nations. That's what that's called right there. They came together collectively to this purpose. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation mm -hmm. that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. It's not in the world because Israel, the land of Israel still exists. You got a people that calls themselves Israelis. They don't want the true Israelites to know who they are. That's what they're saying, that the name of Israel, that they, we don't remember. That's why Maccabees says to the end, they might forget the law. How do you do that? Let's make a law that we all are supposed to be one people. Right. And if you don't do it, we're going to kill you. Right. So eventually, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm doing that. Right. And then as you as you do it over hundreds of years, now everybody forgets. Now guess what? Remember, that's during the Greek, 
Greek Empire, right? Mm -hmm. So now, transitioning to the New Testament, mm -hmm. now Paul comes on the scene and he says, listen, you need a Jew, no Greek, bond, no free. Why do you have to say that? Because they forced us to become Greeks when the history, when Alexander the Tate took over, they forced us to do that. So Christ came, he died, Paul understood, Christ came to bring everybody back together. <clears throat> Although y'all fill out the Greek customs, y'all can still repent as Israel. But read this, trust us. It says, like the black Jews in America. Like the who? Like the black Jews in America. Like the black Jews in America. Go ahead. Some of the Jews of Guinea don't remember their original nationality. See that? Like us, the black Jews in America, those uh, our other brothers in Guinea don't remember who they are either. Read it again. <clears throat> Like the black Jews in America, some of the Jews of Guinea don't remember their original nationality. Mm -hmm. This deplorable ignorance is attri uh, attributed to various causes. Various causes. One, the fall of the Hebrew kingdoms. Right, so when we fell, like you referenced earlier, the kingdom split, and then you had Assyria come, Babylon, Persia, Rome, Greece, different things, okay, real. Two, the lack of communication with Jewish educational centers. Mm -hmm. Three. Because remember what they set up in Greece, they said they set up chapels of idols, profaned the Sabbath, they did all these different things. So we were cut off from that. You know? Three, intense persecution mm -hmm. and the deliberate blotting out of the mind of their true nationality. Yeah, remember, remember we read in the scripture earlier, uh, Moses prophesied he would have yokes of iron until he had destroyed them. So remember the movie uh, Roots? What's your name, boy? Mm -hmm. What's your name? No, your name is to Toby. 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 Toby, right? He, no, your name is Toby. He was trying to hold on. He's like, nah, he gonna whip him until he say it. Okay, go ahead. Thus, Nahum Schlauz said this about Islamicized Jews he met. Mm -hmm. Islamicized Jews, meaning we went into Islam. Go ahead. In most You'll see that today. You see our brothers walk around with the, you know, the uh, Muslim raps and these different things. Same thing today. In most cases, these Hebrews, by race and Muslim, mm -hmm. by faith, seek to hide their origin. Say, it says, in most cases, these Hebrews, by race, meaning nationality, and what? By faith and, and Muslim, by faith, meaning seek, meaning they're really Israelites, but they follow after Islam. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. Seek to hide their origin. They seek to hide their origin. So they just say, I'm going to go into Islam. Same thing back then. Remember they set up that stuff and they said if you don't do it, you die. So men said many of the Israelites consented to his religion. They said that. Right? Which has become a burden to them. Yep. In another example, the persecution of the black Jews in Portugal was right. so, when so we, that's when we rolled in the dark ages. They began to persecute us there. Okay. Go ahead. Was so ruthless and frequent that Cecil Roth tells us the Jews did not divulge to their children the secret of their religion. You see that? Because you have something called the Inquisition. If they found any of us keeping the laws during the Dark Ages, they killed them. So back then, it was like, we ain't even gonna tell our children they, they're the Israelites. Yeah, we're not even gonna tell them. You're, uh, you're Spanish, you're this, you're that. Okay, go ahead. Until they had attained the age of reason. Mm -hmm. The Hebrews- Cause, Cause you know what happened, you know how a child is. You tell them something when they're young, they they even gonna tell everybody. They go to school like, yeah, we this, we that. They, they, didn't, they don't understand sometimes how to reason, so. You know how it is. It's mm -hmm. Read on. Yeah. The Hebrew religion is such that if you deny your religion. Now, watch this. The Hebrew what? Read that part. It says, the Hebrew religion is such that. The Hebrew religion is such that. If you deny your religion. If you deny the laws that God gave you. You will eventually deny your nationality. Mm -hmm. So now, that's why it says, to the end they may forget the law and change all the ordinances. Because if they can get us to do what everybody else is doing, like, Bible stuff, you know, come on. The sociologists and psychologists know, and history has proven that if you deny your culture and nationality over a long period of time, you will totally forget it through the process of assimilation. Right, exactly what we read in Greek history, same thing today, because they got all of us doing Caucasian customs. I grew up celebrating Christmas, Halloween, Easter, uh, what was what's some of the other things? New Year's. Uh, I had the three kings, so I was, you know, I was Mexican. Mexican. <laughs> uh, Catholicism, like, yeah. we all did those Lent. things. Oh, Lent. It's a little cap. That's yeah. why, during this time, the captivity under America, 
they, they didn't allow us to be in the right to the plantations. So when they, when they took that away from us, that's how they were able to say, you are Baptists, you're Pentecostal, you are Mormon, you are Jehovah's Witness, because we weren't allowed to go back and read our records. And that's what we're doing today, that's why we got all these good, but we can read now, guys. Yeah, we can read. You can't hide this stuff from us no more. You know what I'm saying? So that's why right now this is what we call the Great Awakening. We're trying to awake our people and show them this is what the Bible is truly saying. What well, we've been taught, because I grew up, you know, my daddy a pastor. And when I was showing scriptures that King Solomon was black, and I went to vacation Bible school, Sunday school, all my life, he trying to tell me y'all can't show me what the people of the book look like. And then when I ask, I can't get an answer. And that's a lot of our people today that's in the church. We need to know what this Bible is truly saying. Because right. we can read now, so we need to read it like it's supposed to be read. We can't, we gotta stop reading that Bible through the eyes of white folks. We gotta stop. We gotta come back to what the Bible is truly saying. And here's why it's important to know your identity. You might say, okay, well, so what? Maybe you're a Jew. What does that mean? What's the significance? It's significant in every way, especially when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. You mean uh, Revelations 21, if you don't mind, yeah, yeah, verse yeah. Uh, 1. Revelations chapter 21 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This is after the second coming. Read. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. And I, John, saw the holy city New Jerusalem. That's what we want to be. New Jerusalem. It's going to be on earth, like it says in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth. It's not pie in the sky. It's a physical kingdom on earth. Read. Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Now let's jump to verse 10. Hey, verse, before, go, you, go Before you move on, real quick. Uh, read the verse 1 again. Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Okay. Give me um, Jeremiah. You got it? I got one for Isaiah, Isaiah 17 and 12. Isaiah chapter 17, verse 12. Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas. Okay. And to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Okay, so read it again so we can make the point. Revelation 21. No, 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 this one. Oh, this one. Isaiah 17 and 12. Woe to the multitude of many people, mm -hmm. which make a noise like the noise of the seas. It says the multitude of many people that make a noise like the noise of the seas. Go ahead. And to the rushing of nations mm -hmm. that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Right. So when it says there was no more sea, and Revelation is really talking about the other nations ruling over us. Give me that one I was looking for in Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 13. Read 12 first. Verse 12. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchman. Now, Babylon, Babel means confusion. This is, it's, Babylon means land of confusion. That's this place. Okay. You got all nations, all kindreds. Whatever you want to do, any religion, homosexuality. Any gender. Right, any gender. Uh, what's that thing? Any animal. Any animal. Right? Yeah. Uh, bestiality. Bestiality, whatever you want to do. Okay, land of confusion. Read it again. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. That means the Bible. Go out and teach. Okay, read. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. This is judgment. Read. For the Lord have have both devised and done that which he spoken against the inhabitants of Babylon. The Lord have what? The Lord have both devised and no, done. Notice, notice it says he have devised. So he set this up. Babylon is going to be destroyed. The Lord devised and have done that which he has spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. Read on. Oh, thou that dwellest upon many waters, yep. abundant in treasures, thy end is come. Yep. And the measure of thy covetousness. So now, that's the part I want. It says, O thou that dwellest upon many waters. So now, we read it in Revelation, when it says, read that verse again. Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Meaning For what? Because you read about Babylon the Great in the Bible. That's what this Babylon that Isaiah was talking about. 
Most is going to destroy it. Again, that's the purpose of Christ. Mm -hmm. Going back to destroy Babylon, which where the, the Israelites, we are, we are scattered, we here. Okay? And it says what again? I saw what? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Change of worlds, change of realms. We don't. Right. And there was no more sea. That point, there was no more sea because Babylon is going to be out the way. It said they they uh, dwell upon many waters. waters. Right? That's what it says. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it says. There was no more sea. They're not going to rule anymore. It ain't talking about literal water here. Okay, they wouldn't be ruling. And where are they? Because they guess what? They have military bases away. everywhere, everywhere, everywhere across the earth. That's what it says. They dwell upon many waters. Okay, go ahead. Officer. Oh yeah, go to verse ten. Verse Remember 10. it said it said coming down from God out of heaven. So people think oh, it's in a cloud. Read verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain mm -hmm. and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So it's that, it's how tall it is. It's, he went to a mountain to see it. It's going to go on and show physical features of the kingdom. You know? Having the glory of God. So we could see it, had the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And her light was like unto a stone mo most precious, mm -hmm. even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Come on. And had a wall, had right? A and had a wall. So this place got walls. So it ain't just always oh, up there. It's just tall. Read. Great and high. Mm -hmm. And had 12 gates. So great high walls and how many gates? 12 gates. Now I was taught, many of us were taught, there's one gate in the heaven. One big pearly gate. One big pearly mm -hmm. gate. There's a Caucasian man sitting there with a, with a, a desk. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume a notepad. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're reading. 12 gates. Read. And at the gates, 12 angels. 12 angels. Now angels, I imagine they're restricting entry and exit to those gates. Come on. And names written thereon. Now there's names written on the gates. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's why it's significant to know who you are. The gates, the angels, it's all about the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Each gate has a tribe. We don't. Verse 13. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. You see? So you can picture this. This is an actual city. It's an actual place. Is it for everybody? We're reading the names written on these gates, which got an angel guarding these gates. Is the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now, go to 22. 14. 14 and 15. Revelation 22, verse 14. And, and just, again, the mission statement. We want to get in there. I'm trying to be in there. One part is nationality. But it ain't just, oh, I look like this, I get in. Absolutely. That's not what we teach you. Right. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Well, there's commandments again. What was Paul talking about? You ain't got to do none of this. Call it again. 22. Revelations 22, verse 14. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Read. That they may have right to the tree of life. That's how you get that same tree from Genesis, that immortality. You get the right to it by keeping the commandments. Read. And may enter in through the gates. I'm glad you put the emphasis. Gates. Into the 12 gates. Read. Into the city. So the Israelites, to keep the commandments, enter in through the gates into the new Jerusalem. That new kingdom. That right. we say changing of realms. Right. Changing of uh, kingdoms. Right. Well, remember, we read that book. It said there, if you deny uh, right. your religion, you deny your nationality. So get get the precept on what religion is real quick. And would you go, go right. more into that? No, you go again. So, um, yeah, Maccabees. I got about 10 minutes. Gotcha. Okay. gotcha. All right, 1 Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 20. We want to define religion according to the Bible. Read. Start at 19. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. Though all the nations... Yeah, this is, again, during the Greek Empire, right? He said what? This though, was an Israelite. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away every one from their, uh, the religion... Really, though? And fall away every one from the religion of their fathers and give consent to his commandments. He said, though, everybody, I see what y'all doing. Y'all following after what he said. Everybody's doing that. Go ahead. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Notice it says the covenant of our fathers. Read. God forbid that we should forsake the law the and law. the ordinances. Mm -hmm. The law and the ordinances. Go ahead, watch this. We will not hearken to the king's words. To go from our religion. You see that? Our religion. So our religion was always the laws, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Remember, they said, remember it said to the end they may forget the law. Mm -hmm. So our religion is the law. So when this says, if you deny your religion, you deny your nationality. Now that we don't keep the laws, we don't connect ourselves with Israel. Okay? 
Because if you don't if you don't identify as Israel, you're not getting into the gates, number one, because you're not keeping the laws. You don't associate the two with yourself. So that's why we gotta know who we are based on Deuteronomy 28, those curses that happened to our forefathers and foremothers. So um, real quick, let's, you got 10 minutes, Revelation uh, 7, real quick. So he dealt, with, he dealt with the 12 gates only being for the nation of Israel, right? Revelation so, 7? Yeah. Um, and verse, read verse 4, four. and then verse 9. Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Yeah, verse 9. Verse 9. So y'all heard about that, the hundred and forty four thousand before, right? Verse 9. Yeah. Verse 9. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, mm -hmm. which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So now, now we fall off the horse and we're like, well, we got 144,000 of Israel, and then this is all nations, they all coming in to worship God in the kingdom of heaven. That don't contradict what we just read in Revelation. It's 12 tribes, 12 gates. Okay, so what is this talking about? This great multitude. Let's, let's give me a couple. Give me Hosea first. Chapter 5. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, 5 and 9. Give me that one first. Revelation. Chapter 5 and verse 9. So now, we're explaining where it says the great multitude, it says, which no man can number, of all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues. Is this really saying what we think it's saying? Let's go to the precepts. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. And they sung a new, a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood. Has redeemed us to God. By thy blood, read. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Notice it says, out of, out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. Why? Because the Israelites were scattered amongst all nations, peoples, and tongues. How? Into slavery. Remember Christ said that? He said, the Israelites would be led away captive into all nations. So them being redeemed was the same thing John was saying in these two, these two verses here. Okay? He was not talking about literally the Chinese and the Japanese coming into the kingdom. They're going to be there. They, they are going to be there. I don't want to get this mistake where it's like, it's just going to be us there and nobody else exists. No. But they're going to be under servitude. They don't get into the kingdom of heaven like in the gates, but they do exist at that time. They're going to be subject unto us. Okay? We'll read that to you. Uh, so, read 5 and 9 one time. I'm going to go Revelation 5 and 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou hast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred. Let's talk about Christ. Christ died to redeem us as possessive. Go ahead. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That's why Revelation 7 and 9 said, I beheld the Lord, great multitude which no man can number of all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues. Give me Hosea. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Yet the number. These, these are all saying the same thing. These all line up to explain who is talking about. Hosea. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall now, be. Now, now it gives the name prophetically. Now the number of who? The children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. The children of Israel cannot be measured nor numbered. Revelation, I'm going to read 7 and 9 again. After this, I bear a, little, a great multitude which no man could number. Hosea was explaining who he was talking about. Read again. Yet the, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. Right here. Because y'all were told y'all was African American, Negroes, coloreds. Read. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. That's what we're telling y'all. Y'all are the Israelites of the Bible. We must keep God's commandments under the faith of Christ. Okay, read again. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Now give me that one in a second. I got more. I got some more. Yeah, yeah, that's that's first. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. That's tomorrow. Both kingdoms unifying under Christ. It says what again? 
Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. Christ. And they shall come up out of the land. They shall come up. They, the Israelites, shall come up out of the land. That's the quote unquote rapture right there. It says the Israelites shall come up out of the land. Not all nations. Okay, come on. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Right, the great the great day of judgment. Okay. Uh that's it? Yes, that's it. So Israel is going to be gathered. Now give me the one in uh, Ezra's real quick. Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 40. Huh? 40. 40? Yeah. Verse 40. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. When it says, take thy number, O Zion, Zion is another name for Israel. And that number is the 144,000 we read in Revelation. That's the number that it's talking about. And watch what it says take after thy, you take that number. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. That's the men, the leaders of the nation of Israel. That 144,000 are only talking about men. We don't. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. 144,000. Really? Beseech the power of the Lord. That thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed. That thy people which were called from the beginning. The same people from the beginning is the same people you're dealing with now. Go ahead. I Ezra saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number. You see? I Ezra saw a great people that I could not number. He's still talking about Israel. Go ahead. And they all praised the Lord with songs. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature. Taller than all the rest. Talking about Christ, right? And Christ upon every Christ. one of their heads, he set crowns. Yeah, that's what we want. We want Christ to put those crowns on our head, but we got to keep the commandments as Israel. We don't. And was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Mm -hmm. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal mm -hmm. and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is, this, is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so, so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Right, so confessing Christ, is we, us, that's an example of us going out teaching everybody Christ is not a white man. We're going to stand stiffly and teach y'all the true image of Christ according to the Bible. It's more than that. Like I said, it's the laws, statutes, and commandments. That's, that's really what his name is talking about. Okay? This word here. But that great multitude in Revelation is all talking about Israel. Okay? There's no contradiction. Now, last one, uh, Revelation 14. Four, just yes. to back up that 144. Yes, sir. I said it was the men earlier. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. Well, read verse 1 and then verse 4. Verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Notice it says a lamb. That's Christ. He stood on the Mount Zion. Israel. And with him what? A hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. They were sealed with the laws of God. Okay, now verse 4. Verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. That's proven the 144,000 are men only. Because it says these are they which are not defiled with women. Okay. That's going into doctrines, <clears throat> philosophies as well. But uh, on the surface, it's showing y'all it's talking about men. So you got the 144,000. First, you got Christ. Then you got the 12 apostles. Then you got the 144,000. Then you got... Other men, women, and children of the nation of Israel establishing the kingdom of God. That's what it's going into. Okay, that, that great multitude is not talking about. For example, everybody in the church is not going to be a quote unquote pastor or leader, right? That'd be an example. So you have you, then your men, then you have the other men, women, and children. That's the great multitude which no man can know. It wasn't talking about the Chinese and so forth. But like I said, they're going to be there. As a matter of fact, Isaiah 14, because I said I was going to show you. The other nations are going to be there. But how are they going to be there? Isaiah not, chapter. Not in the gates, but let's read it. Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. 
and set them in their own land. Why? Because they were scattered into other lands. But he's going to set us in our own land. Good. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So yeah, they're going to come. They're going to be joined unto us. Sweet. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We shall take them and bring them to our place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. What's the land of the Lord mean? That means the kingdom. We shall do what? Possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. Who were we captive under? We know who it was. It was not just the Caucasian here. It was all nations. It says we should do what? And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. They should be captive at that time. But it's going to be in righteousness. We're not doing raping and robbing. We're not doing none of that. Okay? They're going to be under servitude under us. Okay? Come on. And they shall rule over their oppressors. We shall rule over our oppressors. So God is not coming back to establish a kingdom with the same people that put us in slavery and now they're going to be equal with us. But he's not doing that. We shall rule over our oppressors. Okay? That's that's the establishment of God's kingdom there. Alright? Um, any, any other quick points? Mm -hmm. Questions? No, good, baby. Questions, comments, concerns? <clears throat> um, this is interesting. It's a lot. Uh, a lot of what you said, uh, I knew. There are also a lot of things that uh, you said that I did not know, and I'm going to go research. Took a lot of notes, so gotcha. um, definitely going to go back and read and look, and uh, you know, uh, get an understanding for myself. There are also things that I don't agree, with, um, but the basis of um, what you what you said and what you believe and the foundation of, of your belief system is the same things that. I ascribe to uh, in our church we've never taught never will teach that Jesus was white never had never will it's just it's just not it's not biblical okay? mm -hmm. um, but again some of the things that we taught um, scriptures linking them together I got them all down I'm going to definitely go and um, check them out in research okay um, so uh, yeah that, that's that's what I'm going Gotcha. Any, um, no, no, no. any any of the points that you want to touch on now, um, in terms of like you said, some stuff you don't agree with, maybe we can clarify or um, no, not now. Um, I think the time is on our side. Yeah, I think we all are very committed. So yeah. you know, I'll call again and <laughs> we sit down. Um, this, this is what we and do. I'll definitely have have more to say. Let I will say this, um, and then y'all put this on social media. Feel free to put this. You guys, this meeting and sit down is extremely different from street. It's the same. It's the same spirit. Same spirit, but it is. It is different. Yeah, it, it is different. It's, it's, it's different. Yeah, because like like I said, like I was telling you, I can't like do all the, you know, the, the, it just it's a little aggressive. Let me tell you what the Bible tells us: if you go out on the street and says, "Cry aloud, but spare not," I mean, don't spare our people's feelings. No, no, I know because we, because when we out there, we see our people in the midst of sin. So we have to, and sometimes when people come into the camp, it can be like this sometimes with the people on the down. But there be other times when we be dealing with scoffers and no, things of that nature. Absolutely. So it may come off a little brute, but yeah. that's how Christ talk. I've seen a lot of videos, and I've seen how uh, I've seen the composure that you all have, and I've seen when people come at y'all and go back at them. Um, and in my interaction, like I said, my interaction with you, uh, it was it was cool. So I felt good about coming down, sitting down. Um, I saw your post. Uh, it was you probably know, not me. I don't know somebody. If somebody posted. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was cool with that. Um, I'm cool with. It was probably pictures. It was like three pictures. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. That, that I, day. Saying that I said I was going to sit okay, down. Okay. That day. Yeah. yeah you know. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm cool with that. Like you know, I'm fine with that as long as the both sides are being tough. Right. Um, so I'm, I was cool with that, um, but yeah, that I mean that's where I'm at. Um, I, I heard a lot, um, received a lot because, like I said, this is some a lot of the stuff I had already ascribed to by my own study, by studying with other colleagues. Um, but I, I, you have my word again that if there's 
once I study more and I have still conflicting thoughts, questions, or whatever the case may be, I definitely uh, reach out to you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.